Carol, it's just not a crude oil that has seen a decline overnight, but industrial metals globally have also taken a knock uh, overnight. In fact, uh, US PMI data, which came in at eight month low, is impacting commodities globally. Let's talk about some of them. Aluminium prices on London Metal Exchange have declined nearly five and a half percent over the last five days. We have copper, which is down five percent. Nickel and zinc prices have also declined nearly three and a half to four odd percent over the last five days. Chinese economy woos also continue for the entire commodity basket. Uh, remember, manufacturing data, services data and real estate property market uh, continue to impact uh, global markets, global commodity markets. And Bank of America, in fact, has gone ahead and reduced GDP target for China uh, from 5% earlier. They've lowered it down to 4.8%. So concerns around China, which is the world's largest producer and consumer of most industrial metals, continue and hence global commodity market continue to take a knock. In fact, let's also shift focus to two uh, ferrous metals, iron ore and steel. Iron ore prices have also been on a declining trend. Uh, they were about that $100 per ton mark, but they fell to below $95 per ton on account of concerns from China. And uh, that is also impacting markets globally. Analysts, however, as far as iron ore prices are concerned, analysts say that they have likely bottomed out, but uh, there are limited upside triggers from here on. And hence, perhaps iron ore prices are also likely to remain range bound for the time being. As far as steel prices are concerned, remember steel prices have declined uh, nearly 25 watt percent on a year-to-date basis and Indian steel mills are also suffering because imports from China and Korea continue to be on the higher side and exports have also been impacted because of global slowdown uh, so Indian steel mills uh, mills continue to face the pressure so clearly not all is well for the Indian commodity market and global commodity market Indian metal index on the back of that is declining one percent today and has fallen nearly two and a half percent in the last couple of days Right, thank you so much, Ashesha, for highlighting what's happening with the metal space. So clearly, uh, things are not boding well for the metal space all in all. But we're talking about the commodities, then it's the crude prices that have plunged further. And that indeed is a good and a positive news for the Indian markets. And indeed, and on the back of that, what we are seeing is a lot of stock-specific action. But how does this impact the various sectors and which stocks are in focus? Samit is joining us to explain all of that. Samit. If you look at Brent crude prices, they have fallen below the $75 per barrel mark. Now, this is the biggest intraday fall that we have seen uh, since 1st May 2024. Uh, yesterday, Brent crude dropped nearly 5.2% on an intraday basis. And crude prices are the lowest that we have seen since December 2023. Now, uh, what is more important is that Brent crude has been on a downward trend and it has been declining for the third consecutive month. In the month of July, it was down around 6.5%. August, it fell around 2.4%. And in the first few days of September, it has already declined nearly 6.7%. So why are we seeing this kind of a decline when it comes to crude oil prices? Firstly, OPEC Plus is expected to increase its production in the coming weeks. They are due to add nearly 1.8 lakh barrels per day of crude production uh, to uh, going forward and this is their own plan that they had guided earlier and this is to uh, restore the production losses that they had seen earlier. Apart from that, on the demand side, if you look at China's economy continues to remain soft. My manufacturing data for the month of August was at a six-month low and China is the world's largest uh, crude oil import, uh, Im uh, importer. So the demand supply dynamics is changing and is uh, now we are seeing more supply coming in and the demand continues to remain weak. Now, India definitely benefits because of this because more than 80% of our crude requirement is imported uh, and companies that tend to benefit more from this firstly is the oil marketing companies because the fall in crude oil prices uh, definitely boost up their marketing margin. Currently, if you look at the gross marketing margin that oil marketing companies are earning on petrol and diesel, it stands at around 11.6 rupees and 9.1 rupees per liter, which means that they earn this much amount of money by selling every liter of petrol and these both margins are at a multi-quarter high and as per analyst, every 0.5 liter change in the the fuel margin increases the EBITDA of Indian Oil Corporation, BPCL and HPCL anywhere between 7 to 11 odd percent. Apart from this, it's the paint companies, aviation companies, lubricant manufacturers, tyre and a host of chemical companies that tend to benefit. Also, cement manufacturers benefit because nearly 40 to 50 percent of their cost are either directly or indirectly uh, related to crude oil prices. Obviously, they'll benefit it with a lag because the fall in crude oil prices will reflect in the raw material prices with a lag impact. Uh, 
also lower crude prices is uh, def, uh, negative for uh, oil explorers like ONGC, Oil India, HOEC uh, uh, because uh, lower crude means a lower realizations for them and as per analyst every 5% or uh, $5 per barrel drop in the Brent crude prices uh, reduces the EPS for ONGC and Oil India by around 7 to 12 watt percent. So keep an eye out for all these companies uh, in trade today. All right, thank you so much for that, Samit, for putting into context about the stocks and why they will be impacted on the fact that you are seeing a drop in the crude oil prices. But let me uh, bring on board Shaina Mukadam to talk more about that and also where does she see the crude prices, what impact will they have on the companies and how should one read into it. A very good morning to you, Shaina. And the fact that the crude oil prices are actually seeing a drop, the OMCs are rallying, but uh, how should one actually view such a development coming in, especially if you are a holder of these OMC counters? Well, I think uh, lower crude, crude oil prices is a positive in the medium to longer term for uh, OMCs. Uh, they don't have the pressure of actually having to increase prices. And especially that is a positive given the fact that we are likely to uh, have a couple of elections coming in during the one odd year. While, you know, the government does say that it is a decontrolled sector, there is some uh, linkage between, you know, uh, the ability to increase prices if crude oil prices move up and uh, the ability, uh, you know, for them to uh, maintain their margins. Having said that, I think the first quarter was a bit disappointing for some of them. Like, for example, HPCL and uh, the GRMs have been pretty low if you look at it across board. Given this fact, I think my top pick among the sector would be BPCL. I expect even the second quarter to be a bit sluggish. Uh, you know, maybe because of the low crude oil prices, they may have to take some bit of a hit on the GRMs again. But if you're holding for the medium to longer term, I think BPCL uh, looks quite decent. All right, uh, that's the take coming in from Shahina that because of the movement in the crude oil prices with stocks that you can focus on and BPCL is one such standout stock that Shahina likes at this point in time. But with this fears, it's time to slip into a very short break. Don't go anywhere as we come right back. It's time to take all our stock-related queries. So stay tuned and start writing to us.